with the Michael Yo Show. Celebrities. Can I be honest? I don't like male strippers. Pop culture. And comedy. That's what I'm trying to do is streamline this whole thing into a cult. Plus, 10 things you should know with Yo. The Michael Yo Show starts now. 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 All right, what's up? It's Michael Yo. I am here with one of my best friends in the world. She is my work wife, Kelty Knight. How are you? Oh. It's so good to see you. It's so good to see you. Now, you're on crutches. Why are you on crutches, Kelly? I'm Kelsey? crutches. I have a broken foot. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, a good look on you. It's so nice. Um, and I have a scooter, but I knew you had, like, many floors, so I brought my crutches, but I have a little scooter that I've been scooting around work on. Well, how'd you hurt it, though? I was literally walking across the street in New York in a very Kelty way. I was holding a tote bag and a phone and wearing heels. Ah! Were you trying to take pictures? Is that what it is? Because every time you walk across the street, you have somebody taking photos so you can post. It's true. But I was not. I was alone. <laughs> I was just, I was late. So I was texting who I was meeting like, oh, I'm a little bit late. I'm coming. And I just had a full out trip. And then the funny thing about New York is that like I'm in the middle of the street and right, of course I'm jaywalking and like. There's a truck coming and I'm like on my face and like no one stopped. Of course. Like not a single person was like, are you okay? I like broke my foot in the middle of a street with a semi truck coming towards me and everyone was just like, got to get to lunch. <laughs> oh my. And so it's really broke. You didn't just brain it. It was, it's no, broke. It's broken. So how'd you get across the street? I like. <laughs> no way. Yeah. And then I like <laughs> for like five blocks to work, did a whole show, walked back to the hotel. I was like, I don't know if this is a sprain. This is pretty painful had my husband got me some ice he was in New York at the time got me some ice the next morning I woke up walked back to work and I was like I gotta go see a doctor yeah. then flew to Toronto then saw a doctor so you did all that work when it was broke yeah and I didn't know I thought still, it was just I'm so tough you know Kelty is a ride or die for a job that's yeah. one thing I admire about don't, you don't mess with the schedules no you you love that schedule life mm-hmm. do you still enjoy flying everywhere I love my airline points. Oh my! Are you concierge key? Yeah. yeah. Uh, are you? Did you get yours taken away? Of course. I don't fly that much anymore. Not oh like that. God. Yeah. Not I, even to like go do the comedies. Yeah. No, well, I don't fly that much because how you get concierge key is those long trips to London In and New other York. countries. Yeah. You get like twenty thousand miles, I know. so you do five trips. Your concierge I'm key. Done. Um. Yeah. Chris, my husband, and I are both going to the Seychelles at Christmas on airline points. Oh, this is a little romantic. Wait, what's Seychelles? I don't know what this is. Seychelles. Oh, come on, Mike. I don't know. Where'd you go on your honeymoon? Uh, where did we go? Like Flor- Italy, Florida? Paris. We went to Florence, oh, yeah. Italy, <laughs> <Right>. Florida. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Can't Florida. remember you take that nice girl, Claire. Um, the Seychelles are an island, this a set of islands off the coast of Africa, and they're like some of the oldest rock formations in the world, and it's like the most beautiful beaches that have ever existed, and where the giant tortoises are. Oh, so I'm going so far away because you know that I can't relax. So I have to go to a place where there's no Wi-Fi. But you still won't relax. No, I will. You will. I'll, You're a person that just I, I can't see Kelty and I just laying out. No, and I being lay fun. out, but I always have like a, a ten books that I want to read during the vacation. So I like focus on my book reading and my sunscreen application. Okay, but I've been. It's so sad that my legs broken because I've been working out so hard. I'm trying to really get a Gigi Hadid body oh my God. before I go on my vacation. And I was really doing well, and then I broke my leg, and now I can't work out. So I just stopped eating. So how has it? <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, you don't eat. I stopped but, eating carbs. But you stopped eating a long time ago. Oh Even gosh, when I worked. Healthy juice. What is that? Where are you? You got it. Like, since you got all this lady gang stuff going on, your podcast is huge. How many like health things do you get? Maybe some inside secrets now you can give me that people just send you now for free. Is there anything that really stands out? Yeah. If you don't eat carbs. Carbs. Don't eat carbs. I'm on like the paleo vegetarian diet. What is that? I made it up. Vegetables and proteins. Okay. What type of protein do you eat? Like an egg, a bean, (laughs) an egg, a hummus all day. Like whatever I can. Yeah. A yogurt. I do eat a yogurt, even though that's technically dairy. Because it has, but do you do vanilla yogurt or do you? No, I do the like disgusting tart ass Greek yogurt that's like. Oh, so you don't have any flavor. From a cow that we we brushed constantly and like no sugar. Oh. It's disgusting. So you're living that life right now. I'm, that's why my skin is so beautiful. And like, I'm basically Jennifer Lopez. You always, no. No, because when I eat bad, I get like a little. And that right now I'm trying so to So you think you now. have skin like Jennifer Lopez right now? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I'm beautiful. I've got the J-Lo glow. <laughs> <laughs> Is 
You're still full of yourself, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Only in your presence. Michael, you honestly bring it out in me. I do. Like, you I do. bring out my confidence because you're always like, go get him, Tiger, go and get him. And na- now we're together. I don't want to let you down and like show you who I really am, which is like, I know, I know you're very insecure yeah, underneath so it all, insecure. but, but like I said, when we, w- so mean, right? no, I'm not, it's fucked up. no, I'm saying you're an insecure person. I've yeah. seen you, Kelty Knight. No, we we're sh- all, are you not an insecure person? Not really. Yeah, you are. No. We are all insecure people. No. At the bottom no. of the bucket no. is insecurity. No. No. You're That's insecure. That's why people hate you. No, people love me. That's true. That, but I think I'm not insecure because you, okay, let me tell you, let's go back. You were, we shared, me and Kelty Knight shared a wall at CBS. Shared a wall. We shared a wall. A pooping wall, if you will. Was it a pooping wall? Yeah, because your bathroom was my, my closet yeah, was guess, your bathroom and my, your closet was my bathroom. Okay, I don't like to think about that. Okay, but, just okay, but whatever, but okay. whatever. But Kelty, this was your first big gig. So I mean. You were online. Okay, well, first of all. I was a Radio City Rockette and a backup dancer for Beyonce, so I don't want this to be my first big gig. There were other gigs in different genres. Okay. But a first large television role. Okay, the first big gig where it really depended on you and you alone. I, yeah. I like to think Christmas depended on me no, when it I was didn't. a Rockette. No, it didn't. If I kicked at the wrong moment, I would have ruined Christmas. How much so. stress was it being in the Rockettes? So much stress. Did you- I was like 102 pounds one year. And they were like, do you have an eating disorder? I was like, no, I'm just so nervous. Santa is like crazy. What did they mean? Do you have an eating disorder because you were too big no, at 102? No, I was 102? so small. <laughs> yeah, right? No, I was so small because it was just so much. Like It was like 90 minutes of cardio six times a day. It was like running... A marathon every day. But anyway, back to my baby. No, no, no. Well, hold on. I want to do this okay. rocket thing, and then we'll get back to your thing. So so how much pressure is in that? Because you want to make the team. Was it stressful every year, even though you were already on the team, to make the team the yeah, next year? Yeah, because you don't like... I like that you called it a team. You don't make... You don't <laughs> Isn't make, it a team? You don't make the team. <laughs> football team. You don't make the team every year at the... What do they call it? The pre-training camp. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, no, you... You sometimes can automatically make the team. The squad. And then sometimes you what do y'all call it? The squad. The line. The line. Okay, the, the line. line. Um, you sometimes automatically make it, but if you're like a terrible dancer like me, you like slide in every year right at the so end. So you're not a good dancer. I mean, no, you're not. I'm okay. one of the best dancers. In, I was, at the time, one of the best dancers in the world, but I was definitely one of the worst Rockettes. Okay, so best dancer as in what? Like dance? Like everything. Like I was the upper echelon of professional dancers in the world. But what is professional? Like ballet, standing on your toes and stuff like that? Everything. Okay. Like an all-around dancer. I was a top echelon. Like I did all the gigs that everyone wanted. Really? Yeah, I was that I didn't guy. know that about you. Yes, you did. I didn't know you were like that. I knew I you were that. a rockette. I but. was the Michael. What Michael Yo is to comedy, I am way better than <laughs> to dance. I think. Okay, so what went wrong then? I got old. Oh, really? What What age was that? Where you're like, like I can't 26. do this. Twenty six. Oh. And I I had a bad injury in my like hip, and then some like um some nerve damage in my leg. And I just never got over it. And then um, I was backup dancing for artists and like they just didn't want to pay you. And I was like, oh, I'm like closer to 30 than 20. And like I should probably be able to like afford food at some point, you know. Mm -hmm. So then I made the career change to become a television star. And And how long did that take to kind of pop off? So I came to L.A., I was living in New York for a decade. I came to LA. I was only planning on staying like six months. Because you're from Canada, right? I'm from Canada, but okay. I was living in New York. Okay. I came to LA. I spent like, I was going to spend six months. I ended up meeting my husband and getting the job at CBS in the first six months. For the online? For the online, Okay. Yeah. I'd had this blog, this dancer blog that had been really big. And then I met this woman out who worked at CBS and she was like. Who'd you meet? Um, this woman, Lee. Do you remember Lee? No. Lee Collier? I never met Lee Collier. Oh. That was before your, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so I was, I had auditioned weirdly to host, be a VJ of like a music show because I just loved music and I got it with no hosting training. It's like natural. <laughs> um, but then I applied to like be an online writer essentially, like in my spare time. And I thought, oh, I'll keep dancing. And then I liked it so much that I just like kind of quit the dancing. And then the online led to the insider. Yes. Yeah, so online, I was writing articles and making my own videos online for a year. And then I was for a four month period in the fall before I met you, I was a correspondent on the insider, like getting pulled up to the show all the time to do all these interviews. And oh, then, the insider was, on, I keep forgetting. Remember, the it was insider. on before. Yeah, that's right. And okay. then I got demoted 
kind of back down to contributor when you were a correspondent on OMG Insider. Yeah, the worst name for a freaking tele... It was tele- so embarrassing It was so us. embarrassing. That is why sometimes, like, I have learned in... Like, I'm now I'm old, and I'm... Even though I am an insecure person, I, like, really know what I like. Yeah. And I've been in a lot of, like, these meetings and, like, doing my life and in all aspects of my life. I am so down to fight for what I think is right in a way that I never was before. And why is that, though, now? Because I had to stand on the carpet for two years and people would be like, OMG, insider. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was they like... They would make fun of it. Celebrities it was would... so embarrassing. Yeah. And now, like... Um, like anytime something comes up, I'm like, the font on this is not right. And like, this is not right. And like, I would never say that. Like, I'm really precious with like what I put in the world. But I also think that confidence comes from having the lady gang, a very successful podcast where if all went to shit, you still got money coming in and, and financial freedom creates a lot of confidence. Yes. Financial freedom allows you to be brave. Yeah. I think in a way, like I was just talking about this. I had just like renegotiated a new contract and I was talking with my um, hairstylist in New York and she's like a single mom who runs a salon and has two kids. And I was like, you know, it was so hard for me as someone who is like full of privilege, yes. you know, like my parents are still married. I'm white. I have a husband who has a job. Like I, he's white. He's white. Yeah, like, I mean, the, the, the privilege the, is everywhere. The privilege is is everywhere. And mm-hmm. I have a million people and a million lifetimes to fall back on. And it was hard for me to stand my ground. So I can't imagine what it's like for her being like a black woman, a single mom with two kids, like with a whole studio or uh, a place, a shop to support, like how she would ever negotiate a contract from a place of not being completely afraid. Yeah. And that's why we like get held down. And I think, so scared. and I think that's another thing where when I first met you, that's what you were always afraid of. Fear. Fear. And rejection. You, you, you we both, I, I guess yeah. you could say we both came from a place of fear, but I think it's now we're kind of veterans in the game. Yeah. And, and I'm like, if you don't want me, you're lost. Yeah. You're lost. Like, I'm a <laughs> and that, and that's the thing. I think it's it's yeah. now we're like okay. If you don't want me, somebody else will, and it's fine. And even if they don't, I got my own thing I can do. Yeah, like the rejection doesn't like break your heart the way it used to. I I went to a casting not too long ago, and I didn't get it. And my wife was like, "Are you bummed?" I was like, "No," because. And then here's what's funny is when you don't get a show that you think you really want it. And then when you see it aired, you're like, thank God I didn't get it. No, the like miss. I, we always say on the lady gang, uh, man's rejection is God's protection. And that's so good. <laughs> I think I made that up. No, you didn't. No, I think I did. Last no, time I, I was on your show, I, don't I think, think I said you did. It. We've I think, been saying it for many years. No, I think you, I think you took that. To, maybe we said it in the green room one day or something like that. But you think I, it's yours? Okay, no, we I got don't. A trademark. Think. Oh, you got. This is the thing I love about Kelty is I always told Kelty own your stuff. Yeah, own it. Own it. Own it. She started this lady gang and. It, three years now? Four years? Four years, yeah. Four years. Wow, that long. I know. And now it's like huge and it's your income and you're selling boxes and all types mm-hmm. of stuff. And you had a TV show on E. Did that get picked up or no? Um, it is. You can't say? Can't I can't talk about it at this moment, but I okay. will let you know. You will let me know. Yes. Okay. But we have lots of things. We have a book coming out. We just finished the book. We're trying to name the book. And so I really want this one name and I'm holding strong. And why, what, what's happening? Because there's like a else lot of people. It? A lot of people are, you know, feel, saying what they think the book should be called. And we all feel like really strong about this one title. And so we're just sitting back. So what, what book company, so the book company wants a different name. Yeah. Well, there's like a teams, right? There's like marketing teams and publishers oh, gotcha. and like whatever. And they are like geniuses and they know what sells, what's out there. They see every book. Like I see the books they sell at the airport because that's like where I got books or the old books that I rent from the library down the street by your house. Um, And so it's like, I'm not an expert on the names of books, you know, but now I'm noticing them everywhere. I'm like, oh, you've got this book called Bad Advice. That would be a great title for the Lady Gang book. So so what makes you think your title so right? Because it's like just in my gut. Yeah, you feel it, huh? I just know it and I can see it like on people's Instagrams and on their coffee tables and like it's just so So can you see the name the book company wants on Instagram and on coffee tables? No, but we're getting there. We'll figure it out. All right. I'm just going to fight to the death. So now are you kind of like the ringleader of the lady gang? Yes. I think they call it like the crazy bitch. Oh, you're the crazy bitch. (laughs) You're the CB. I'm the, yeah. I, um, I'm the taskmaster 
Jack is definitely like the creative. She does all of our graphic design and our branding, which I think has been brilliant. And Becca is like an ideas man. Like Becca will be like, you know what we should do? A world tour. And that's all she'll say. <laughs> like she won't, she won't make the list of like what a world tour would consist of, like how we would afford a world tour, like what dates we're going to go. She'd just be like, you know what we should do? Like jumpsuits. <laughs> and then, and then like, that's it. And then you're like, yeah. And then like two weeks later, she'll be like, but what about those jumpsuits? Suits. And I'll be like, oh, well, I went and looked into a factory <laughs> in New York that will make them for us. And it's going to cost this much. We could sell them for that. Like, I'm like the taskmaster. Well, I, this is when, this is, I got to be honest, when you started the Lady Gang. You were like, that's a dumbass. No, idea. no, no. I, I thought it was a great idea, but I felt bad for you because it seemed like, and don't take this the wrong way, you were teaming up with people that wanted you to do all the work. <laughs> That's what, because when it first started, every time I would go by your office, you would have all this lady gang shit on, on your desk. I'm going, what are the other people? You're like, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. I was like, what are other people doing? Just being famous and bringing people to the party? And like, yeah. And in my mind, I'm like, well, that makes sense. They've earned their right in a different mm-hmm. way. But literally, I was kind of like, dude, you're going to get burned out because you're doing everything. Yeah, it was a lot for sure. I yeah. think that we each had our, we each had had our own strengths and have our own strengths. And unfortunately being the taskmaster and like the organizational queen, I was kind of like really in it the first year or two, like getting it off the ground. And now like we have directors and producers and like people that I've hired. And so like a lot of that's off my plate. Um, But like Becca, her main, her main thing that she, other than her like amazingly blunt personality, her main thing was like literally just being like someone that was cool in Hollywood and could be like, hey, you want to come? It's with that girl. And they're like, oh yeah, she's cool. Okay, sure, we'll come. You know, like I couldn't get anyone to say yes to me. They're like, you fucking loser. Like, I don't yeah. come on your stupid show, you know? And like Jack didn't know anyone in Hollywood. So that was like, she was the booker, you know? And that how'd was y'all, like, How'd y'all meet? Jack and I used to date the same guy. Who? The fallout boy, you're Panic at the Disco fallout boy, one of them? Yes. And which group? You can Google it, Michael. I'm not going to, I'm not going to. Well, you talk about everything. I'm not going to bring this up on the show. My husband is watching. What? No, I'm just kidding. Um, No, we dated the same guitarist for Panic at the Disco who's no longer in it anymore. She dated him first, then I dated him, and then I've recently found out she went back to him after. So that's gross. (laughs) um, So then. Wait, but didn't y'all hate each other though? After that? We were pitted against each other by the emo children of 2006 on the internet. That's right. I never met her. That's right. I don't know her. I don't know her. It was like mm. a Jennifer Lopez, Mariah Carey. So I always thought she was really cool, but we were pitted against each other. So then we kind of ran in the same circles for many years. And then Becca and I had mutual friends in New York from Broadway. Yep. And so Becca and I were like, we want to do something. And we're like, we need someone that's like not in Hollywood to like give us. And I was like, I know this girl. She's really cool. And I secretly think I always want to be friends with Jack. And so I like called her up and I was like, do you want to do this podcast? I like never had spent that much time with her before. And then she came and did the show and she's like, yeah, okay. Cause she's like an adventurous. Yeah. She was just like, yeah, cool. Sounds good. And now we're like sleeping in the same bed and like, I know everything about her menstrual cycle. Like, oh, it's wow. Amazing. It's like, like that. Tight. Yeah. You're tight, huh? We're tight, tight. Okay. Okay. That, that's good to know. Yeah. I that's know good. everything about her. Are you surprised that it got so big pretty quick? I think that it's the timing. It's like, it feels like, you remember when the first YouTuber made a YouTube and then six years later I was like, I should make a YouTube, but it was too late. Yeah. It's exactly the same thing. We were like the right girls at the right time that was nice and early. We were like one of the first female podcasts. So like when dudes were watching their sports podcast or their crime podcast and Serial came out and we're like, let's jump on it. And they're like, well, are there any podcasts like Oprah or like The View or like, um, like the cool girl podcast we were there and we're like one of the only ones that existed now if we launch now we probably wouldn't be successful at all oh i guarantee you would okay, because i think because first of all you're all talented and you had leah michelle on one of your first episodes that really got a lot of attention yeah we had like a really stacked first year that's that great a lot. but now honestly people our fans are actually saying to us and i mean don't take to this to heart because I should always be on your podcast. But fans are saying to us now, we don't actually want any guests. No, anymore. they just want y'all. They They're just listening want us. for just you. They want to know about my stupid life. And I'm yeah. like, I am so awesome. You're absolutely right. <sighs> oh you should God. listen to my mundane musings. No, here's what's interesting is once you build that base, yeah. like they just want you in oh podcast audience, and you'll know this because you've been in it. The most loyal. Those are your people. Those are my people. Like your people. Has I saw my you. Has been this bad the whole podcast? The whole time. 
time. Fucking hell. Yeah. It's yeah. been awful. I've been like yeah. this. You look like an old grandmother. It's disgusting. You, you look like a Ew. You look like a grandmother uh, doing a okay, show. I gotta stand up. Straight. You're gonna have ter- You're a dancer, for God's sake. I'm disgusting. I just realized it. Um, you know, there are people I, was, I have terrible chairs though, let's be honest. Well, These are I terrible do think chairs. it's a little screwed up that you gave yourself a nice leather ottoman and you gave me a metal chair. Yeah. Like, can you get another leathery? For well, I just guests? need to it's dominance. Yeah, I just <laughs> I just need you to know. But Claire who designed show- this, right? Yes, she did. So Claire put her chair here, and then you stole it. Well, no, no, she knows who's the she, she man knows of the your house. ego needs a little. She knows who's the man of the house. Okay. She knows who makes all the decisions oh, in this house. Okay, Kelsey Knight. Okay, I remember when you guys got married, and it was so cute. And you were such Are- a sap. Oh my god, I cried so much. You cried so much. But I, I got to be honest, and not just because of my wedding, it was probably the best wedding I've ever been to. It was so fun. I, I mean, it was so a dance. Party. I had, um, didn't I have like laryngitis or something? Something. No, I think I had pneumonia. You came to my wedding with pneumonia. Yes. <laughs> Well, thanks I for didn't that. want to miss it. I remember I had no voice. Yeah. And it was like the day before the Grammys because it was Valentine's Day. Yeah. And I remember that I was. Did you like, have to work the Grammys the next day? Yes. And I remember like having the best time ever, but like fake yelling, being like, everyone would be like, yeah. And I'd be like, <laughs> and then I remember bringing a bag of nuts with me because I was so sick. I couldn't eat anything. And I was just eating nuts all night. Oh my God. Anyway, your wedding was great though. Oh. I had the best time. And my husband danced. Oh, we dance. And your dance? Oh. Right? That first dance was so good. Sasha put it together from Dancing with the Stars. It was so good. It was so good. We got it on tape. It it was the most amazing. How was your wedding? Was it small? Yeah, it was tiny. Okay. didn't invite anyone. 40 people. Wait, did, when did, how long ago did you get married? We were together on the TV show when I got married, but I didn't invite you. (laughs) I didn't invite anyone. We had to draw a line. Yeah. Well, first of all, it's my second wedding. So small. Wait, you've been married? Because I was married when I was 20, remember? You knew this. Michael, I it's forgot. Like we don't know each other. No, but I forgot. Yeah, I was married when I was 20. Why'd you get married when you were 20? Because I'm dumb. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I agree. Stupid. I agree. So it was a tiny wedding. And then also, like, our worlds at the time were so crazy with all, like, the different work stuff. What? Um, and <laughs> Wait, so- we have somebody on the floor over here. What happened? Oh, the iPad is going out. You, okay. Yeah, we're losing power on the. Don't worry Get about it. Um, anyway. Did it go out, Jameson? Work, okay. Our work worlds were so expansive that, like, if I invited two work people, it was going to be like another hundred people. And I was very adamant because I had a big first wedding and it was like the worst day of my life. Uh-huh. And, like, I remember my dad. Um, this is a story I tell in Lady Gang book, but my dad looked at me before I walked on that and he's like, you know, baby girl, you don't have to do this. And I was like, oh, so he knew. Oh, shit. Yeah, so it was knew. like the worst day. And so I, um, I Wait, wanted, why'd you get married then? Because I was young and stupid, and like, and you knew he wasn't. You, you knew he wasn't the one. I mean, I was terrified, but it was also like, well, here we go. And I think a lot of women get in that mistake. They're like, oh, this is what we're supposed to do. And where I'm from in Canada, everyone gets married at like 2021. 20, like nobody goes to college. Like, do you want like, kids? No. And Chris is fine with that. Yeah, he doesn't want kids at all. Really? Yeah. That is like perfect. Yeah. I mean, if you're in that. Good couple. Yeah. Can you remember your life before children? Yes. You miss it? No. At all? Not at all. Not at all. Because I have a purpose. Not that you don't, but... I don't have a purpose. No, you don't. (laughs) (laughs) No. (laughs) My purpose is to fill my own self-fulfilling prophecy. No, no, no. But my thing is about legacy. Like, your thing is not about legacy. Like, after you die, that's it. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. You don't... I had to write a will the other day, and I was like, what will I do with all these diamonds? And I was like, don't care. This guy? I am your work husband. You should leave them for me. (laughs) I'm like, gonna have to leave them for Claire. I was like, "Oh, I have all these like amazing vintage albums," and I was like, "Michael, Goodwill." <laughs> no, Michael, yeah, right. I'm family. You'll be dead. You're way older than me. Oh, please, I'm please. Die White first. people die way faster. It is true. You live long, but I live so long. My grandmother in um, Quebec has had her one leg amputated and is about to get the other one amputated, and she's 99, and she's still like, "What the fuck is up?" So, what does that mean? I'm going to live forever. No, I don't think so. I think I'll live longer than you. Okay, should we have a bet? I think so. <laughs> okay. And the winner uh, gets the other person's okay. will. The winner gets that chair. <laughs> Whoever lives the longest gets that fancy podcast chair. <laughs> and the person who's dead has to get buried with this tin <laughs> Ikea metal chair that is making me have You wouldn't be so lucky to win butt. that chair, Kelty okay. Knight. So uh, you have nobody to leave anything with. That's no. positive and uplifting. I have a niece and nephew. Okay. Okay. See, my thing is Oprah about- doesn't either, bruh. Hey. 
I'm not. Neither I'm does not, your Aniston. Aniston doesn't have children. I, I I'm not knocking it. Hey, no, no, I'm not knocking but it. But you're like the only person I've ever asked that question that has said, "No, I like love having kids." Like, I love it. Everyone I is love like, it. "Oh my god, do you remember? Will you get to sleep in? I don't know. Remember what that's like." But well, that's just that. But you know who you hear that from? Selfish people. And I am selfish. I know. A hundred percent you are. You're all about Kelty Knight. I'm all about Kelty. I'm surprised you're married. Really? Yeah. The tables have turned lately. Chris Knight is all about Chris Knight. It's really? Like really? hurting my feelings. When did this happen? I know. Just in the last year, he got a new fancy job Whoa. and he's like, oh, making power moves all the time. And I'm like, but what about your Kelty time? And he's like, yeah. He doesn't care anymore. Rolls so reverse. I might be into my third husband soon. We'll see. What? <laughs> And definitely is he be a gone celebrity. because before you were gone more than him. No, he's gone all the time. He works for can you say? Yeah, he works over at Rock Nation. They, have they moved into the new building yet? Not the new, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're right under nice. Sirius XM. Yeah, yeah, it's a great building. Yeah, I'm so excited. Have you met Jay Z? Yes, I oh. just saw Jay Z this weekend. Where at a party? Mm. And it was so funny because like I've met Jay Z a couple times, I think, just in like passing or yeah. whatever for our jobs. But, like, I haven't seen him since he's been Chris's boss. He's probably going to get fired now that I say this. But anyway, we're at this event at, uh, or party, and I, like, I hear about him all the time. Like, I hear about him, Jay Brown, like, all the different people Chris works with. These yeah. are his coworkers. And yeah. he's like, oh, yeah, like, you know, they thought I was doing a good job here. They thought I was doing a bad job here. And, like, you know, the wife's job is to figure out the troubles of the husband. So sometimes Chris will come to me and he'll be like, I don't know how to handle this. And I'll be like, well, here's what I would do with my female compassion. And like, here's how you can be a great leader. And he has female clients. And sometimes I'm like, this is how you need to talk to them. Like you can't, you know, cause it's different. What yeah. we need is different than what a guy client needs, you know? So we're always talking about it. So I started at this party and I like reached out and I grabbed his hand. I was like, Jay, good to see you. And I gave him a thing and then I gave him like a, on both sides of the cheek and I was like good to see you. how you doing man and he's like good good and who are like, you he looked at me and he kind of walked away and I was like cool he has no idea who I am <laughs> and I was like but you owned it that's what it is you I know who it. you are that's right I, hey I owned it and my my HUDs is working real hard for your dollars so you know <laughs> like making it a success oh, okay yeah. so now you're on the ET but he's cute Jay-Z. Who, Jay-Z? no we're not talking about that wait wait Jay Z's cute he's cute he's so tall I didn't realize he wait was you cute. called him cute He's cute. Okay. Like he's a good looking guy. He's oh. mm. Is money making you say that? Like like powerful men look better? Is that what no, you No, he has like a style. He like, has a thing about There's like him. a sweat there's like a did star you think, power. Did you think Prince was sexy? I never saw Prince in real life. Oh. Because sometimes, you know, we have to go off of like the movies yeah. and then whatever. And you see someone, you're like, oh, wow, they're so beautiful or so gorgeous or hot or whatever. And then you see them in real life and you're like, oh, that person has crazy eyes. Like you wouldn't oh, have yeah. known that. You kind of got crazy eyes too, though. I know. Yeah, you. Thank you. I, I, yeah, thank you. That's not a compliment, Kelty. <laughs> okay. <Knight. laughs> so, uh, speaking about like uh, crazy eyes and different relationships, Miley Cyrus. What do you think about her right now? I love it. Do you? Miley is perfect. Yeah. Her body. Is I love how you go to the body. It like I, I was talking about babe, the person. Her Pilates body is next level that's a breakup body that is but she le- looks but, amazing but didn't you okay let's be honest here yep. let's put it on the table and i don't know how to say this in the since everybody's so sensitive nowadays yeah. i don't know how to say this the right way but to me liam is way better looking than Miley. no way in hell you are the crazy. hemsworths make my insides like a Sahara desert. I feel nothing about Hemsworths. Well, you're the only person in the world. That's not true. There are many anti Hemsworths. I'm not anti. I love them. I love them. Oh my God. I'm not mad. You're the only person that's ever said they are not a child. Look, Jameson's over there and he's gay. Do you think the Hemsworths are hot? Damn attractive. Thank you. Even dudes. But not Liam. Liam is good looking. Liam I'm a is dude. the least sexual Hemsworth. Oh my God, stop it. Thor! Do you think, so you think, like, you know where you see pairings and you're like, eh. Here's the thing about Liam. Here's the thing about Liam. Here's oh why gosh. they broke up off the record. No, oh. I have no idea. Allegedly. <laughs> you're making this up. Okay, go okay, for I'm it. Okay, making this up. But I can see why Miley, like, this is the person you fell in love with. You were 17 years old, 18 years old. You're so young. And he's like this great looking guy and he checks all the boxes, right? I did the exact same thing when I was her age. Like you have a great family. You're 
lovely. You are hot. You have a nice future ahead of you. Like you're, you love me back, like all of those things. And then she grew up and he has probably remained a little bit boring. Like that's what I see of Liam. I think he's like for any other girl, so exciting. But for Miley, like growing up in Hollywood, touring with Achy Breaky Heart, like for her, she needs some excitement where he's more laid back. His level of like life is probably like, I like to binge shows and surf and like have a barbecue. And Miley's like, I want to create my own custom inflatable ass pool float and, you know, like... And go skinny dipping. You know what I mean? Like, she has a different level. And I think what it is is that she's like an enthusiast for life. She wants to be out. She wants to experience. She wants to be having these moments. And he seems like more of a homebody and someone that I think wants like a much simpler life. And at first, that probably appealed to her because she was like, my life's been so crazy. She's just being Miley. Like, everyone is always Hollywood, Hollywood. She wanted to be simple. And then she spent some years being simple and she was like I don't want to be simple any longer and that's so what, what do I you want happen. are you a simple or are you I'm a, a simple yeah I used to think I wanted the excitement of it all yeah and then when but I but I think that has a lot to do with age like once you get no, like Miley's I'm, like 26 27 right, she's still yeah. experiential yeah, get it and out that's why I don't think anyone should get married before they're 30 uh, you waited a long time and it, it worked out perfectly yeah like my You're, wife my wife is getting the second half of my life. Half. No, the the half that's going downhill. Like I live my great 40s and now she's going to get the worst of my 40s. Because when I first met you, you were a bit of a player. I was never a player. You were a little <laughs> bit of a, a spoken player. No, no, like, no. What you I no, were no, 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 let's no. The man you are with Claire. Let Oh, no. You but but would. let's be I I went out no. See, you're using player wrong. No girl ever thought she was the one. A player is a no, guy. No, right. You're right. You, so I dated tons of girls. You dated so many girls so many. and did you like any of them? No. Okay. And they liked you. They liked you, but you were like, nah, nah, nah. And they were like trying to get you to oh, calm yeah. down. And you were like, nah, nah, nah. And then you met Claire and you're like, that's the one. Like that's we the knew one. instantly I knew. like that. But you waited a long time. And then she got a great man because you were older. You were like, okay, I've been around. Mm-hmm. I've lived my fun life. Yeah. I'm ready to be married. And then instantly you were like, and I want to be a great father. Like, that's the most important thing. Right. But like you can't get that from a man that's 22. Not at all. He's not ready. Not at all. But and you got, Miley's maybe the man. But you got married younger, too. Again, you got married at 20, and then you got married at what age? 28. Oh, but okay. Chris that's, already 31. That's, yeah, like, that's, he was yeah. old. He'd yeah. already been in his band and, like, fucked groupies and, like, all yeah. that stuff. Like, he was... So he's past that now? He's ready to be with a boring girl like me. You are not boring. Um, You're a lot. Yeah. No. But anyway, I would like a simple <laughs> life now. I'm ready to have a simple life. Okay. Like, I'm like, cool, Michael, when are you going to invite me over to play golf with Oliver, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I would love to do this with you more because I, I find you fascinating. I, we've always, I want to do a show with you. Yes. As far as, like, a TV the show. The show. Why do you, you know, the Yo Co. Show, like, because, let's be honest, I mean, Yo sounds better first. Yo? What? Well, where's Co come from? Kelty? No, how it do doesn't get, go. No, how do you get co Kel, out of Kelty? Kelio. No. Froyo. Yoti. Y- yote. <laughs> yote. <laughs> Welcome back to Yote. Yote. It yote. sounds like it sounds like something you get on your feet when you like go without shoes in a river. <laughs> you got a yote. <laughs> you got, you got Man, y- I was fishing in the river and I got a yote on my toe. <laughs> And that'll be the logo. Just a yote on the top. Uh, Shane Gillis, did you hear about this? This dude that got fired from SNL? Yeah. What's your thoughts on that? Oh, man. I know. I've been reading it all. And, and it, it's mostly about the cancel culture and your thoughts about that. Yeah. So I, I think that it is, hmm, I want to say this properly. I think it's really hard to dig up things from people's pasts and hold them accountable for them because we are all imperfect people. And I also think the landscape of, of what is socially acceptable changes rapidly every, every week. Mm-hmm. You know, there were things that I said on the Lady Gang two years ago that like, I mean, people are still listening to those episodes, but are I've, you, changed, are you scared? I've changed my mind about it. I'm not scared because I feel like people understand that like I'm a person who's learning about wor- the world and stuff. But, but are you scared that that doesn't matter? Somebody can bring up something you said from two yeah. years ago and go, this is the girl you hired. I think, so. I think so. And there's like also, you know, taken out of context and, you know, the energy of the room. And, and I think the other thing about anyone that's in entertainment, 
a comedian, someone who hosts live television like we do, these live red carpets. Um, You're talking about going four hours straight right. just talking yeah. and not to do, uh, not to have a slip up. Right. Like even it's. So, yeah. And I think we hold people to this like super edited um, Instagram version of life when we are all kind of imperfect. And like, if you haven't said something off color in your life that you've been like, hmm, like, um, you're probably not a human. Like people say stuff like that. And I think if the apology is real, then it's okay. And I also think it's like, it's just a weird time. Like I had a, we were, t- we talked about this maybe on the podcast. No. Um, I had a thing with Tiffany Haddish at the Met Gala. I saw that. I yeah. had used her fucking, she's ready, but I said it like a Canadian. She is ready. And like the world came for me and they were like, and then she tweeted and was like, yo, like anyone can use my tagline. And I felt so embarrassed because I was like, I thought it was just like part of the group using her tagline. And I didn't realize like, I'm not allowed to say that or what the rules are. Yeah. And, and I learned a lot from that experience. It was and cool that she stuck up for you too. She, it was cool because was I think cool. that's what it is. It's like, you know, listen, if someone is Hitler and is like ruining earth with their thoughts, like I absolutely believe that that's an evil person. But I think sometimes in the comedy, like, don't you guys go out and like try your jokes? Well, and some of them, like Amy Schumer was saying, like, you got to go and like kind of bomb as a 100%. comedian and like say things and no one laughs or no one thinks it's funny and you think it's like going to be funny and then it doesn't go and that, that's kind of what the guy did well, right I was I was no his was different I'll explain that but I want to explain where writers come out to see comedians and they write an article about them it's almost like if you're a writer you go see a comedian and your first draft is the thing that gets printed like you have misspellings, you have everything. Yeah. Like when we're on stage, that's our first, that's not our finished draft. Right. So you're seeing mistakes, you're seeing yeah. mess ups, you're seeing us fall on our face. Right. So if you're ever, whatever job you do, your first draft is when you see us on stage. It's not finished until right. it's on a special. Right. So everything is a work in progress. Right. And you're just like reading the thing and, And there's certain people that can say certain things and other people can't say certain things. And so it just becomes like this really confusing world to live in as a public persona. Um, How careful are you now with this world? Because like you said, two years ago, you would say certain things you don't say now, but you being on ET as well, you know, that's a brand you got to like, because you represent them. But the lady gang is like, a different version of you that's, Hey, I'm Kelty Knight. I'm crazy, crazy eyes. Let's go. Well, I think the, yeah, I think the great thing is, is that we, you know, we don't do politics. We don't do religion. Mm -hmm. And those are the two things that I think like kind of ruin people's dinner parties. Yeah. (laughs) So, um, we stay kind of safe. And I, I think that like our truths and things that are scandalous for us are a little bit different than like, we're talking about like periods and tampons. And so it's like, yes, it's scandalous. And it's like, woo, taboo, but it's not like taboo in the way like a racist joke might be. You know what I mean? Like we don't really go there. Um, cause we're, our motto is kind of like you do you like whatever, but I've definitely learned like I, um, have you, have you, I know lady gang has put you even more on the map, Mm -hmm. but have you felt like you may have missed out on a job because of lady gang? You know what? I absolutely have. I had someone tell me earlier this summer that lady gang was like, like opposite of like the kind of job I wanted. And like people saw me as like that more than really. Cause there's like two. So you flipped it. Cause women aren't allowed to be like smart and funny and outspoken and classy. Like you can yeah. only pick two of those things at a time. You can be like smart and classy and lovely, mm-hmm. or you can be like outspoken and real and authentic. Like Chrissy Teigen is not like the first lady. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, like, they, they don't consider her as classy because she speaks her mind, she which is right, messed up. I think that's, that's actually really fucking classy because yeah. you open up the whole, you know, world and make everyone feel more normal. But it's like, you're not allowed to be both of those things, which is kind of screwed up. Yeah. Now, uh, there was a picture floating around. Calvin Klein model, girl, hair under arms. Did you see it? No. But I love a hairy armpit. I have one right now. But to rock on a model. Like, here's the thing. If Here's what here's the problem I have. If a guy comes out and goes, you know what? That's not my thing. Yeah. He gets attacked. Right. You know, it's like, oh, well, the woman can do whatever she wants. But I'm not saying, like, if I'm the dude, I'm not saying she can't do what she... Right. It's just I don't like it. Like, yeah. like I, Which I, is fine. I, but I feel like people get attacked for even I saying... Know. Stuff like that. You kind of just have to scroll past it, those hairy armpit moments of your life, Michael. You have hairy armpits right now? No, but I'm going to get some laser hair removal. Oh, my God. It's not that hairy, but, you know, it's like I'm growing it out. Are your legs hairy right now? 
Well, one well, of them you're on is set. I'm in a cast. You're in a cast, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's been hard for me to shower how lately. Is it, Thanks how's for it, asking. How is this shape, like, with this leg mess? Like, it's a mess. Because you have to show some leg on the show. Yeah, I've been, like, scrouching in a tiny ball on my side, <laughs> like, in the shower, like, just crying. Just <laughs> Sarah McLaughlin playing yeah. in the background. In the arms <laughs> of the angel. No, it's it's hard to be a lady. It's really hard to be a lady. As you know, you're married to one. Yeah. Oh. Wait, are you having a girl or a boy? Oh, the next baby? Yeah. We don't know. <gasps> We're going to wait. Did you find out about Oliver? Yeah, we did. You knew he was a boy. Oh, yeah, yeah, Because yeah. it was Oliver before he was born. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had so you're gonna to. you going to find out this time? No. <gasps> We're going to find out when it's born. It's oh, going to be fun. at the beginning of December. Oh, shit. It's coming. I, it's like right around the corner. Oh, my God. It's crazy, Michael. I know. So happy you knew you. me when I was single running around. Huh? Do you feel the pressure? Of? Like taking care of your family? Yes. You're going to have to pay for these kids' college. Oh, I'm not worried about that. Oh, you're, not, I, you're like, just, they'll have sports scholarships. Yeah, no, I mean, they're so, I mean, my, just go to my Instagram at Michael Yo and see my kid hit a golf ball. Yeah. I'm more worried about, I like, think, raising them in Los Angeles. Like, oh, really? I can't wait to get that big gig where I come in three, four months in LA and live somewhere else. Like, yeah. that's my, or, or blow up like my friend Joe Coy or a lot of Sebastian, blow up in comedy where I can live anywhere in the world, anywhere in the United States, but close enough to LA where I could fly in if mm-hmm. I'm needed. So I'm really like, for instance, if I get to a certain point, like that I'm happy financially, like I don't need to be in this rat race. I just want to do stuff. I, I'm yeah. to the point now where I just want to do stuff I love. Yeah. And I felt for so long, and you know this too, I stuck in a lot of jobs because of money and I'm not doing that anymore. So I'd rather build my own financial freedom and do what I want. And then hopefully that takes off. You know, of course I still will host and yeah. do things like that, but I, I'm trying to find my own, like comedy is my thing. Everything I do moving forward needs to promote comedy. It's so funny. Cause you always mention this guy, Joe, Joe Coy. I've never heard of him. You're always like my super famous friend, Joel. And I'm like, I don't know who you're talking about. He's one of the biggest comics in the world. He sell, sells like 40,000 tickets in Hawaii. Like the dude's huge. Yeah. Do you know who that is? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I've met Joe. Yeah. Nice yeah. Is he a big, big star? Yeah. He's huge. Michael, uh, you guys met on Chelsea lately. You right? met on Chelsea lately. Yeah, so I used to watch Chelsea lately, so yeah. he'd be on all the time. Oh. Yeah, Joe Coy. I've never heard of him. Oh my God, he's so I guess funny. I'm not, I guess I only have one favorite comedian. Yeah, who's that? It's you. That's right. Well, and, Asian, and, man. and you know what? I'm so Kelty came out to my special that's on Amazon Prime, and she ne- and she hates comedy. Mm-hmm. And did you really, to be honest, now that it's done, did you really enjoy it mm-hmm. as you're swallowing all that stuff down your throat? Yeah. No, I hate comedy. <laughs> Chris and I were both like, are we really doing this? We hate comedy shows. Why do you hate comedy? I've too. I went to your birthday party that Claire arranged where everyone <laughs> roasted you, which was technically a comedy show. And then I went to your comedy show and I was like, I hate stand-up comedy. I just Why? think it's funny. I don't think it's funny. But now, since I saw yours, I've started watching other ones and I was like, wait, it is funny. So did you and Chris have a good time? About we comedy? laughed. I thought I was going to have to fake laugh like as your friend. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Michael. <laughs> Amazon is gonna love this content. You know, like I'm yeah. just gonna like clap really loud and like give you a standing ovation at the end, like just to be nice. Yeah. But then, like, I cried. I la- I laugh so hard. You're so funny because you talk about real life. Yeah. Your comedy isn't like well, on the chicken cross the road. <laughs> you're like, you know what, my mom. And yeah. I was like, oh, God, you're Kelty, do you think it's a little bit like watching figure skating where you're just afraid the whole time they're going to fall or like a magician where you're like, oh, what if the trick doesn't work out? Do you think maybe it's that about comedy? You're thinking, what if they're not funny and I have to fake it? Yeah, I definitely thank you for putting those words in my mouth. I definitely thought, what if Michael isn't funny? And this whole time he's been like, oh, I can't do the weekend interview with Julia Roberts. I have to go do my comedy show. This whole time I've known him. He's like going away every weekend and to Kelty do comedy would shows. Have, and Kelty and would get so horrible. mad. Kelty would get so mad because I'm like, I got to go do comedy. And then they were like, well, Kelty, you got to go. She's like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm like, really? I got to work every weekend because Michael, you also go do comedy. We don't even know if he's funny. Has anyone <laughs> seen him be funny? Why is so, he going to Arkansas? Can he get a gig I, here? Is gotta, he not funny? I got to be, a, I got to admit, I abused the system at CVS for a little, because Kelty was doing all my shoots that I would have to go out and come. But, but she took it, man. She I did she, it. I worked my way up. Yeah. And now look at you. Look at me now. You're still at the same point you were with. Same with exact <laughs> thing. Doing weekend shoots. Yes. <laughs> so excited. I I literally had to have a little cry on the phone because my leg's broken or my foot. And, um, and you know, like 
our sh- show, it keeps going. It keeps going. And you're like, in, okay. and you're and in season. In so it's season like now. Monday night I had a voice junket, then a Dancing with the Stars, and then yesterday I did things all day, and then I drove downtown the Grammy Museum to see Billie Eilish, and then today I was shooting shows, and then tonight I'm going to a Brad Pitt premiere, and tomorrow I got another thing, and then they called me like at, right before I came to you, and they're like, um, "Can you do like a, a shoot tomorrow at 8 a.m.?" And I was, I just. And they're like, why? And I was like, I just don't have a reason other than like my leg is broken and <laughs> I'm just having a hard time getting around right now and it's really exhausting and I'm in a lot of pain. Like, can that be enough of a reason? They're like, okay. And I'm like, okay. You worked that one out. I know, you know, you're like, I can't. And they're like, And why? Kelty has a problem saying no. I can't say no. Like, I can't. Why? No, I, I just can't. Why? Well, because I don't want to. Well, that's not a good... Okay, yeah. well, my foot's broken. Yeah, yeah. And I said no. I was really proud of myself. So what, Brad Pitt's tonight? Brad Pitt's tonight, yeah. What, what movie? Ad Astra. Oh, I haven't seen it yet. Netflix. I only saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Did you like that? I'm not a Quentin Tarantino person, but I thought Brad and Leo were fabulous. That's what I heard. I heard they were really good in it. They film. were really good. Like, what? Quentin Tarantino's too weird for me. What's I the, needed to be all wrapped up in a nice room. Did room. you do the junket too? Uh-huh. Okay. Not the junket. They didn't do a junket. The premiere, though. Uh, did you... Uh, what's the best movie you've seen, like, over the last couple uh, months? Um, Priyanka Chopra is in this movie called The Sky is Pink. Okay. It's a, I guess you would call it a Bollywood movie. I've heard of it. And it's all with subtitles, English subtitles. And she's so, it's like a family story. It reminds me of like my big fat Greek wedding, but like more serious. Like I think she might get an Oscar. Like it's really good. I saw Judy too, which is wonderful. What is that about? Judy Garland. Oh, Judy Garland. Okay. So she was like, you know, in the Do- Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. Yep. And then, oh, this is the one where they get like, but they, they do give Dorothy her pain pills after, and all yeah, that. Dorothy, Renee, Renee Zellweger. Yeah. Right. It's Renee. It's like Dorothy after. Sorry, Judy after like. But her what's fall the story? Like they gave her a bunch of pills and she got she was addicted. Like addicted to stuff and like and she was like twelve. It was like a really early like Britney Spears thing where yeah. they kind of Hollywood just was like. We're going to do this with you. We're going to do this with yeah. you. And this is when studios okay. had contracts with stars and, you know, you had to make all these movies and they wanted to keep her up, you know. They, they wouldn't like, let her eat anything because they couldn't have a fat Dorothy. Like, it's like really crazy. Oh, yeah. You you would have thrived in that. I if mean, you're like not been... eating, oh, Kelty, sign me I'm up. I'm ready. <laughs> Give me my bowl of air. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Kelty, if you could yeah. uh, hook up with uh, any three guys in Hollywood. Who I like that you don't have notes. I don't need notes. No, I know. It's yeah, amazing. Yeah. Uh, three guys in Hollywood? Yeah. Like, like just in the fantastical world of what yes, like it Kelsey does and make my husband if, divorce me? No, no. If Chris was like, dude, what three guys? Okay. Um, damn. Okay. <sighs> Is that an Asian guy? Damn. I've never heard of him. Damn. Oh, damn. <laughs> Yote. <laughs> Yote. <laughs> the, God, I slept with, damn, and I got the yotes. Yep. <laughs> um, okay, I think probably Chris Martin, but like early Coldplay Chris Martin. I'm okay. so disappointed. That looks like Chris, your husband. I know. Okay, you yeah. got a type. Uh, yeah. Um, him. You uh, got to throw an ethnic guy in there. No, I Don't will. go I make will. it vanilla. No, I'm All not right. going to make it vanilla. Um, oh, God. Um, like Lenny Oh, I just saw Lenny Kravitz and he's so thin. I didn't realize he was so thin. He's maybe small. He's Id- a very he's small, small man. guy. I thought he was you big. Need a, you like bigger guys. No, I like an Idris Elba maybe. Oh, okay. Like I'm into an Idris. Okay, my wife he's is into that too. gorgeous. Yeah, I And like the it. English accent. See, I find English accents annoying. Well. I hate them. This goes from Houston. You know what I don't like, Kelsey what? Knight, is my wife, when Big Mike from The Bachelor goes on. Yeah. She's like, oh, she oh Mike Johnson? Very, yeah, who? Mike Johnson? Whatever, the black guy. From, yeah, yeah. Okay, whatever. I, I just know him as Big Mike. Her face lights up, and she goes, oh, my God, I get so excited for him because he has your smile. Like, I see a lot of him in you. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, that's I don't like that. And, and the same thing with Idris. Like, we don't have the same smile, but she is very, like, I don't like that. I don't mm-hmm. like watching that. So you're jealous? Yeah. Yeah. Jealous I don't like of it. Idris Elba. You're jealous of Mike from The Bachelor. No, I'm not jealous of him. Yeah, no. No, no. But Idris, yeah. Yeah, he's okay, cute. Okay, so that's two. One more. Um, here's the thing. You know, it's like I can't just do the fantasy because here's what I know about- Because you meet them? Ho- no, I met them, but like here's what I know about Hollywood guys. They have been hot and famous since they were young, so they've never had to try. So they're probably like horrendous in bed, which is like I can't really wrap my head around. So it. you think, like, guys- on a, in a fantasy level, like, of course, there's like, um, would Brad Pitt still be in that for you? He's so old, but like, he is hot. Yeah. What about but Leo? Like, Le- no. 
Okay. I can't get behind a man that vapes. Liam? No, none of the Hemsworths for Not even sure. Thor? No. Like Zach Efron sitting down, like he's so short, but his face is so beautiful. Okay. Like you would do him sitting down. I guess stand so. up. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Just don't I stand. don't know. I can't say this, but I don't know. I, um, Nico Tortolan, Tortola, Nico Tortorella. He's from Younger. He's the love interest on the show Younger. He's polyamorous. What about Penn Badgley? I don't know who that is. No, I don't like Penn. Okay. I don't like that kind of like actor guy. Ah. I like a musician probably. Yeah. Yeah. That's you. You know? So. Would you do any rapper? Um, oh, we just had T.I. on the Lady Gang podcast uh-huh. and he was so smart and so lovely. And I was like, oh, I get it. But I, I wouldn't, again, yeah, want to break up. He's like 18. He's like so many children. <laughs> yeah, it's like 37 children. Lar- yes. Like, it's a, <laughs> that's a lot. Like it's a one night only kind of thing. Like, yeah. I don't want to get into that. It's kind of a messed up like social situation. So. Okay. Sorry you're jealous of if it. You could, if you could ask any celebrity any question, they wouldn't get offended. What celebrity would you want to ask what? Well, I, okay. I think it would be J-Lo. Uh-huh. And what would you ask her? I'm very interested in her love life because I love Jennifer Lopez. Like, like I think I think Jennifer Lopez is like one of the greatest artists of our time. I know. It's crazy to you. Like, Miami. wait, wait, wait. Okay. Artists like people as people stand Beyonce. I stand Jennifer Lopez. Like, okay. Like artists as in what? Like, like acting or just. Greatest entertainers. Entertain like, all around. She's a crazy good show. Okay. She has yep. bops. I love her in a rom-com. I love her makeup. I love I her it. hair. I love her red carpet glamour. I love her like ridiculous love life. I love all the wedding rings. I love her in broken engagements to Ben Affleck. Like I love it all. I think she is like such a Hollywood star. Like she does not live a normal life. Like she lives on a yacht in yacht, yacht culture and it's not my life. And yeah. I love that about but her. But what would you ask her? Well, here's what I know. I know that male dancers are great in bed. Okay. Okay. She's married two. No, married one, Chris Judd, and then dated Casper for a long time. But now she's like A-Rod, and she's also had like Ben Affleck. Like she has bedded some real Hollywood power hitters. And if I could ask a question, I would just love her to rank their lovers. Like in that would order be such of deliciousness. Great, yeah. Because Why are dancers I, better in bed, you think? Because I, I got a story, and I don't want to even tell that story, but okay. I have other stories where it's, I know they're not. No, they definitely are because they're so giving and they're bendy and they're like smooth, like baby dolphins and, (laughs) um, and their like bodies are just like so beautiful and they like are so, do you like a man's body or a woman's body better? Do I like, I like a woman's body better. Better, Right. Yeah. Yeah. Men's bodies are disgusting. Disgusting. You know what it is? I feel like male dancers really have, have nailed the like tramp step hair removal. And whereas like a non-dancer doesn't understand that that part of their back exists and is like (laughs) not good, (laughs) you know, like I think that men wax their backs and they like trim their whatevers, but like there's always that patch of like tramp stamp extended butt hair that is just like not good on men. And dancers don't have it for some reason. I don't know if it's the well, pl- because they're the plies always- or they're all they, they're like baby dolphins. Oh. I like a smooth man. So so you hooked up with a couple of dancers in your past in my in my day. Okay, sure, yeah, okay. yeah. Who didn't? They everyone was always like, oh my god, all the dancers are gay. I was like, mm. not all, <laughs> not all of them. <laughs> no. And so I, that's what I would ask Jennifer Lopez because I think her love life is just so interesting. Give me one fact about Beyonce that you know by tour with her. That most people. Well, I didn't tour with her. Oh, you did. I did red. I mean, I did award show performance. Oh, okay. So I don't really know her that well. I know this. I know that um, when we performed with her, Tina, mom, had made everyone these like fringe shorts (laughs) for the performance, and I really wanted to steal mine. And at the time, I was like, like baby reporter at CBS and dancing, and I was like, like, you don't want to get fired. I really want these fringe shorts they're so cute and I was like nope I can't steal from Beyonce so I put my fringe shorts back in the box and then like two months later I was at a dance class and I saw this girl Danny Vitale I'll call you out bitch um (laughs) and she had the fringe shorts on and I was like did you steal those from the Beyonce gig and she's like yeah girl we all did (laughs) and I was like god damn it I could have had those Beyonce shorts but I didn't Kelty Knight 
It's gone too fast. It's gone too fast. And like, I'm right down the street. So we, I could well, be I'm, regular. I'm serious. I would love, because we, I, I want to talk pop culture with you. I know, I want we to talk didn't about even life. get into it. I know, I the know. The posture was bad. Yeah, you need to work I, on that. I know, I can't even, I know. Ugh, yeah. So much to work on. I'm like constantly working on myself. If you could it's fix exhausting. one thing about yourself, what would it be? It would probably be my terrible posture, my ugly neck, or as Twitter says, my piss, no, no, my buttholes for eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Someone wrote that. Who's this girl on entertainment tonight with buttholes for eyes? <laughs> I was like, I kind of see it, you know, you <laughs> because I do have poop brown eyes, but yeah. and they're very small, so it's like, I and they're do, and they're really in there. They're really, <laughs> they're really jammed. Yeah, they're really jammed in there tight. <laughs> buttholes for eyes. Horse face buttholes for eyes. All right, Lady Gang is oh, yeah. on Lady Gang podcast. Promote all your stuff, please go. Subscribe and listen to the Lady Gang podcast. It comes out on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And right now, our Lady Box is on sale, and it features over $250 worth of hand-picked items, and you can get it at theladygang.com. And if you're a man listening to this, you could buy it for your wife, and she will probably give you a blowjob. Wow. Okay. You hear that, honey? I'm getting you a Lady Gang box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kelty. Thanks for stopping by. Bye. Later. Later.